So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today's going to be an exciting one because I was scrolling through my YouTube feed as one does when they're bored and one of the videos that popped up was actually this very cool iPad OS 15 concept video um, made by a person named Avdan and I have no affiliation with them, they don't know that I'm actually doing this so I'm going to link their channel, first link in the description below because I did not make this concept, I don't want to take credit for it, I'm just kind of reacting to it and seeing how realistic it is to get some of these iPadOS 15 updates, you know, coming in June whenever they do release iPadOS 15 to everybody. But this concept was amazing and I figured this is the perfect channel to kind of show it off. I mean, their channel is a little bit bigger than ours, but I did want to react to it and kind of go through all the different aspects that they see in iPadOS 15 because some of the implementation of it is actually beautiful. So without further ado, like I said, it's Avdan, first link in the description below. Bombard their comment section and let them know that, you know, Fernando from NandoPrince93 sent them over because I would love to work with them and kind of get some ideas out there. It would be amazing to kind of work with somebody so creative like that. But without further ado, let's check out the video. So like I mentioned, let's go through this video and see exactly what Avdan has for us because again, I saw the concept video and was blown away and I saw some realistic, you know, use cases and ways to actually implement these new iPadOS 15 features and that not being so crazy for it to actually happen. So if we go, again, we're just gonna go into the YouTube app. I already have it pulled up. It is again by Avdan iPadOS 15 concept design and we're gonna let it run. So let's make this full screen. We'll restart it. So the first thing we actually see there is, is that app library or launchpad, which is the, the equivalent that you would see on macOS. So normally with macOS on the bottom left hand side, there's an icon that lets you move into like the launchpad, which has different apps. And it's especially useful now with Big Sur and the M1 chip because you can use iPadOS and iOS applications. So that's kind of where they're stored. So I like that idea to kind of bring that quick access to an app library. So I'm assuming that we are going to get an app library with this concept. But as you can see, we're moving on and boom, look how pretty this home screen is. You see that the widgets are all over the place. It seems like we have Final Cut Pro on here, which is awesome. Um, you can see that the widgets are different sizes. They're placed wherever you want on the grid, which is something that I really want to bring to iPadOS. And I don't know why they're restricting us to just that slide over home view to put widgets because if you don't have it permanently on there, then you're going to miss out on the information that you want at a glance. So I think this is a great implementation. You see that you have Final Cut Pro, Photoshop, you even see some folders in there, which I think would be a good additive to be able to put that on your you know, icon grid as your home screen because the iPad Pro is becoming more and more people's choice for their only computing device. And if they can get their folders on here, if they can get a calculator, Final Cut Pro, more professional level work applications and more customization of the home screen like you could on a desktop computer, things are gonna be amazing. So we continue on, we got iPad OS 15. So again, you can see the home screen, so place apps anywhere on the screen, folders, files, widgets, move them around, and they work perfectly within that grid, which is beautiful to see. And even Instagram is on there, which is nice to have. And there's no, again, there's more freedom with the grid because right now, whenever you do anything on either iOS or iPadOS, you guys know it goes from top left to bottom right, and you can't really skip lines or you can't skip icon sections unless you put a blank icon there if you have an icon pack or something like that. So having the freedom with that grid is gonna be amazing. So we continue, again, they're showing off that there's folders. And then here's another thing. So now we have slide overview and the ability to move folders to directly from iCloud or your files application onto the home screen. So you have quick access to files that you need. So again, and then obviously the app library is coming into play, which I didn't think I would actually miss that on iPadOS because I didn't think I would use it too much on iOS, but I found myself using that a lot. So I only use my main so I only have my main applications on my iOS home screen and then whenever I need to search for an app, I just swipe down or go to the app library. So I think bringing the app library to the iPad Pro, which is something that I didn't think I was gonna miss, I actually really like that idea, especially because I personally like to have my home screen totally blank and only have my main applications on my bottom dock. So again, you have the app library and then you have different ways to sort them and then categorize them. So you can do it by list view, or you can do it again by the categories that they have here. And then you have interactive widgets. This is pretty self-explanatory. I would hope that the widgets stay interactive. This is the big one, external display support. But look at the implementation on this, which I absolutely love. So you saw that it recognizes that there's a secondary monitor, and then it gives you the option to mirror the iPad display or use it as a secondary display. So give the user the option. If they do wanna mirror it, by all means, mirror the display. But if you wanna use it as a secondary monitor, then you have that option there. And again, you can see that it's done through AirPlay which is something that I would love to have as well. 
So if we press play, you can see how it populates that screen perfectly. And then this is another way that they are trying to implement secondary display support. So I'm gonna let this play out. You can see that there's two options on the top there and you can use it as a separate display, then move that application into that secondary display that you have. And then you have it full screen on your secondary display, which is such a cool implementation of secondary monitor support. Cause I get it, Apple's not gonna wanna give us classic secondary monitor support because I guess then it would be obsolete to sell MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros unless you're a really pro level user and you need to buy a $3,000 laptop or something along those lines. But if they wanna keep a differentiating factor between iPad OS and Mac OS, they're gonna have to do something a little bit different. So just let me use a secondary monitor as another iPad screen, right? Keep, give me a better aspect ratio, let it form to the screen and then kind of reform itself to fit the screen that I want. And don't keep me boxed in with that four by three aspect ratio with the letterboxing and things like that. Let me use a full screen in its entirety and not have to do a workaround with it as well. So I love this implementation of the secondary monitor support and being able to move things around very quickly. And then we have open iPhone apps in SlideOver. So now you have the ability to open different iPhone apps within SlideOver, but then not only that, but move them around wherever you want and then now resize them also. Because I've been in situations where the SlideOver window, I don't need it to be that big and it's covering up a lot of one of the applications that I'm using during multitasking. So being able to kind of make it smaller like you do with the keyboard currently, because you can pinch the keyboard to make it smaller. And then also with picture in picture, you can kind of resize that window for as big or as small as you want. So having that same UI and that same you know, function with iPhone apps on iPad OS will be wonderful. So having that is cool. And then also bring the calculator out to the iPad. So improve multitasking, this is actually really cool. So you can kind of move from slide over and do whatever you want with it and then kind of enlarge it and there's a lot more manipulation when it comes to multitasking. So you can see here where they go into here, open and slide over. And now the fact that you don't have to be in multitasking to access slide over. Cause right now, if you want to access your slide over applications, you need to be in a multitasking state. You can't just open up slide over on your home screen like this. It just, for some reason, it doesn't let you do that, but having that option would be awesome. So you can kind of just play around with it and have that. And then you have a new cursor mode, right? So I love that drop down. cursor mode is on. And then you can see, boom, this is huge. This is kind of brought over from Mac OS, obviously with the three little circles, the red, the yellow, and the green. So being able to just X out of applications, minimize them or make them smaller or leave the full screen is awesome to have. And then knowing that when the iPad recognizes that there's a cursor on here, so that cursor support is turned on, it'll know and automatically give you that UI and that option to you know, close out of applications and do things like that. And we continue on, you can see how the UI just fixes it perfectly and it works perfectly. And the next thing is multi-user support. And multi-user support seems to be a big deal for a lot of people because not a lot of people want to spend you know, money on a device per kid or per person inside of that household. So having just maybe one really nice iPad Pro for the entire family to use would be cool. Or maybe one iPad Pro for all the kids to use and they all just have their own separate accounts. That'd be awesome to have. Because I remember back in the day when we had like a family computer, everybody had their own account. Why not have that for the iPad? It's powerful enough. It's strong enough and it's expensive enough where you don't want to buy three different iPad Pros if you have three kids, right? You might as well just buy one with a lot of memory or a lot of storage and just have the three kids share it, right? And even having that option with lower level iPads, by all means, I would love to have that. So bringing that on and being able to switch users pretty quickly and log into your account with just a quick look and it'll recognize who you are too. So you don't have to like pick, be like, all right, this is Fernando, I want to go into my account now. And then he also has a, an idea for redesigning the control center, which I like actually. I like having this kind of more landscaped out and then also look at this. This is beautiful, this little concept right here. I love it. Overall, Avdan, a round of applause for everything that you did because I think iPadOS 15, if it looked like this, it would be a different ball game. People would not even consider MacBook Airs. I mean, maybe some people would, but a lot of people would go more towards iPad Pro because like it shows pro level applications, you know, the ability to customize your home screen however you want multi-user support, secondary monitor support, um, being able to have a real cursor support. Even though I like the way the cursor is on the iPad right now, I do like their implementation of it. But overall, it could still get better from a UI perspective. Being able to kind of mesh macOS and iPadOS just a little bit more. And I do believe that this concept, this iPadOS 15 concept, is doing just that. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So overall, I think that Avdan iPadOS 15 concept is out of this world. I love the idea of it. Like I said, secondary monitor support is the number one thing that I personally want. Multi-user support would be awesome. And then just being able to redesign your home screen how you would want to, right? 
or keep the grid layout, but let us move things around where we want it. Like let us start on the bottom right if you wanna put an app there and not have to fill up the entire screen with applications. And also let us use widgets anywhere on the screen. I would love to have that implementation. And then it'll give developers even more of an incentive to make even larger. Maybe we'll have like an XL version of a iPad OS widget because it can just fit more information on a bigger screen with the iPad versus an iPhone, right? So that, those are all things that could happen. Like I said, I think the most probable one out of all of these is probably the app library coming over. I think that's gonna happen. Maybe some multi-user support, some sort of secondary monitor support. I think it's gonna come. I just, I don't know what it's gonna look like because I don't think it's gonna be a traditional secondary monitor support like we're so used to with Mac OS or Windows 10 or things like that. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Normally they start talking about it in the summertime around June and then the beta start coming out in June and then usually by September they'll release everything to public. But we still got a ways to go, right? It's it's just March now, so we got a, probably three more months, four more months before we start seeing any real iPad OS 15 wish lists or iPad OS 15 updates that are coming our way. But I think the future for the iPad is very, very promising and don't sleep on it. I know that right, right now the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro with the M1 seem very appealing for a lot of people because they're so powerful and cheap and it brings a keyboard and everything that you need just to get started. But Apple has a plan for the iPad Pro and I think we're gonna see what that plan is this month with the 2021 iPad Pro and then moving forward with their software iteration. But that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, I did not make this concept video. I'm gonna link the channel down below. All the credit goes to them. Avdan, look them up. Also Bombard, like I said, bombard their comment section. Let them know that you guys found it because of our channel. And that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys like these kind of videos because I always like to kind of see what people's ideas are for iPad OS 15 concepts because I think they're so cool. And I wish I could get creative like that and uh, have that ability to create those videos, but maybe someday. But until next time, peace. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperleg. Have a safe.